Welcome to Learn at Ease. In this video, I will explain in detail the signaling of insulin that causes glycogen synthesis. So let's get started. Here to understand this mechanism we will consider muscle cell as the target tissue. In the animation, insulin receptor is shown, for now we will consider the condition of starvation where there is no insulin in blood. Inside the target cell, there exists an enzyme, glycogen synthase, which can exist in active and inactive form, so let us first see how they function. Glycogen synthase possesses several serine and threonine residues, in its active form, these residues are non-phosphorylated. Active form of this enzyme triggers synthesis of glycogen. But during starvation, another enzyme, glycogen synthase kinase 3 exists in its active form, this enzyme also possesses several serine and threonine residues which are non-phosphorylated when it is working actively. This enzyme during starvation is active and it phosphorylates serine and threonine of glycogen synthase and inactivates it. Thus, during starvation glycogen synthase is inactive and there is no glycogen synthesis in muscle cell. Now, when person consumes glucose, it enters the blood and circulates throughout the body. This activates beta cells of islets of Langerhans of pancreas to release insulin into the blood. Insulin will travel in the blood and bind to its receptor on the target cell. Insulin will bind to the alpha subunit of insulin receptor this will cause the activation of the receptor. Here the detailed mechanism of receptor activation is shown. Briefly, insulin contains two alpha and two beta subunits constituting 320 kilo Dalton molecular weight in total. The beta subunit possesses several tyrosine residues. When insulin binds to the receptor, the alpha subunits will drive the change in the conformation of beta subunits, this will cause autophosphorylation of tyrosine residues in the beta subunit. Let's get back to the original animation. So form tyrosine phosphate will drive the phosphorylation of insulin receptor substrate 1. Once the IRS1 is activated, an enzyme, Phosphatidylinositol 3 kinase will bind to it and gets activated. Let us see this mechanism in detail, IRS1 and PI3K is shown here. PI3K possess a protein domain named SH2, which is SRC homology 2 domain. Additional information about SH2 domain is shown in the text on the left. Protein containing SH2 domain will bind to phosphorylated tyrosine residues on other proteins. Here, through SH2 domain PI3K will bind to IRS1 and this will cause its activation. The activated PI3K will act on phosphatidylinositol 45 bisphosphate and phosphorylates it. This will cause its conversion to phosphatidylinositol 345 trisphosphate, abbreviated as PIP3. Another enzyme. 3 phosphoinositide dependent protein kinase 1 abbreviated as PDK1 will bind to PIP3 and gets activated. Activated PDK1 will recruit protein kinase B and phosphorylates it. Let us see this mechanism in detail. Here PIP3 and PDK1 is shown. PDK1 possesses pH domain by which it can bind to PIP3. The term pH stands for plextrin homology domain and it consists of approximately 120 amino acids. Additional information on pH domain is shown in text here. There is another domain in PDK1, that is kinase domain, when PDK1 binds to PIP3, its kinase domain will get activated, it will then recruit protein kinase B and activates it by phosphorylating it. Let's go back to the original animation. Activated protein kinase B will phosphorylate GSK3, and inactivates it. This will cause the activation of glycogen synthase which we will now see in detail. Briefly, after glucose consumption, protein kinase B is activated by insulin signaling, this will phosphorylate serine and threonine residues of GSK3 by which it will become inactivate. In the meantime, serine and threonine residues of inactive glycogen synthase will self-dephosphorylate, and slowly glycogen synthase will get activated. Meanwhile, there exists vesicle containing glucose transporter, GLUT4 in the cytoplasm. Activated protein kinase B will induce clathrin-aided movement of GLUT4 and fuses it to the cell membrane. Now through GLUT4, glucose molecules from blood will enter into the cell. 
activated glycogen synthase will make use of these glucose molecules to synthesize glycogen in the muscle cell. Hope you enjoyed my video, stay tuned to my channel. Feel free to share, like and comment. Subscribe to LAE. See you soon.